Bah. Gareth Hughes. Uh, kia ora, Mr. Tenarque, Speaker. Mr. Mr. Hughes. Kia koutou, kia ora. New Zealand First isn't the only party opposing this bill. You've also got the Green Party because while it's called the Taxation, Annual Rates, Employee Allowances and Remedial Matters Bill, what this bill should be called is the National Party Oil Drilling Subsidies Bill. Now, I want to get onto the factor provisions which the Honourable Member just touched on, but at this bill's heart, is an extension of $5 million in subsidies for one of the world's most wealthiest industries, the oil industry. This government wants to fork out $5 million of taxpayers' money for the oil industry to see more oil drilling, risking more oil spills, seeing more greenhouse gas emissions. Mr Speaker, that's not a good idea for New Zealand. This isn't the way to build a richer New Zealand and lift our kids out of poverty. When we're looking at the tax code and we support tax reform in the Green Party, we should be looking at how we reduce the burden on Kiwi families. We should be looking at how do we send the right economic signals through our tax system. How do we actually address tax avoidance, which FACTA tries to address, but when you look at it, there's massive privacy concerns, the fact that the FACTA treaty hasn't even concluded its negotiations, yet here's the little old New Zealand Parliament signing up to a treaty which hasn't even been concluded. This treaty deals with uh, 70,000 uh, foreign-born uh, residents in New Zealand, uh, if they're a New Zealand cit uh, American citizen and they have more than $10,000 in their bank account, they have to register uh, in the US. It uh, raises significant privacy concerns, surveillance concerns, and is an exercise in extraterritoriality. Uh, it's a, big, it's a big risk, Mr Speaker, and the fact that the treaty hasn't been concluded, I think, should raise alarm bells. So when we're looking at the tax code, let's look at the avoidance issue. Let's look at the economic signals we're sending through our tax system. But let's also look at how we can make it better. And that's why the Greens are proposing a capital gains tax on the family home. We want to see investment go to the productive sector, not into the, the, the skyrocketing Auckland housing market, driven on by speculators. Mr Speaker, this election's the Kiwi public have a clear choice. On one hand, a party for the speculators, a party that wants to see more money being invested into housing, not to improve it, but to speculate. On the other hand, this side of the House wants to see investment in a productive economy, and investment in an innovative economy. Because, Mr Speaker, this is how we're going to see a richer New Zealand, a smart, green, innovative economy and a carbon uh, tax cut, along with the capital gains tax on the family home, is a critical part of that. So it's quite a surprising situation when we're talking about tax reform as we are of this legislation. It's not the National Party, it's not the ACT Party talking about tax reduction. It's the Green Party, Mr Speaker. It's the Green Party that wants to take $2,000 off the tax uh, bottom threshold. It's the Green Party who wants to see a 1% business tax reduction rate. It's the Green Party that wants to ease the burden for New Zealanders. And who do we want to see paid? We want to see the polluters send a signal through the tax system to invest in smart green innovation. Because at the moment, the National Party and the member sitting there barracking out, he's quite happy for the taxpayer to pick up the tab to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars to subsidise polluters. The National Party wants to subsidise polluters. They are subsidising polluters, and they're doing that right now through our emissions trading scam, Mr Speaker. It's time for a carbon tax cut, capital gains tax, really focus on avoidance. But let's get to the issue at hand, which is fossil fuel subsidies, because this bill extends the non-resident offshore oil rig tax exemption. $5 million of taxpayers' money going to foreign oil companies. Mr Speaker, this government is pouring uh, tens of millions of taxpayers' dollars down these failed oil wells. It's National who gave a $25 million seismic survey subsidy handed out on a platter to the fossil fuel industry. It's National who presides over $46 million per annum in tax breaks for the most wealthiest sector in the world, a sector responsible for the spike in carbon emissions, a sector responsible for a great deal of harm around the world. And it's National that wants to extend the $5 million non-resident oil drilling ship extension. Mr Speaker, this isn't the way New Zealand should be going. We should be embracing a smart, green, innovative economy, building a richer New Zealand. And this is what the experts say. This is what uh, the evidence suggests when you look around the world. This is what the brute economics is. So while National stands up for the oil drillers, wants to see more fracking, drilling, mining, they want to see Denison expanded, we're offering a real choice. A choice that's going to see more workers employed, more profit staying in New Zealand and a more sustainable economy. So this bill is part of a long list 
of fossil fuel subsidies you see under national. Globally, the International Energy Agency estimates we could have $610 billion every year subsidising fossil fuel globally. What the international experts from the United Nations, from the United Nations Environment Programme, to the International Energy Agency are all calling for reform. Because that $610 billion, of which New Zealand is a component of that, could be better spent. Better spent on lifting people out of poverty, giving people real energy choices and building a resilient uh, energy system powered by clean energy. So, while it's the Treasury was opposed to extending this, the OECD is opposed to it, the International Energy Agency are calling for fossil fuel subsidies, National wants the taxpayer to face the risk. Now, I challenge any National member to go out to the election, go out to the constituents, go out to the voters and say, do you want us to keep propping up and subsidising with your money the fossil fuel sector, the oil drillers risking our beaches, risking our treasured wild places. Go on, ask your voters and constituents if that's what you want to see hard-working taxpayers' dollars being spent on. Because I bet your bottom dollar, Mr Speaker, taxpayers don't want to be forking out for this. We want to be seeing uh, kids lifted out of poverty. We want to see our wild places and our animals protected. So it's a clear, clear choice we're seeing in this uh, bill is symptomatic of the clear choice we have this election, which is on one hand we've got a government that is quite happy to risk the last 55 Maori's dolphins by offering oil permits over their sanctuary, a sanctuary that's hardly providing sanctuary if they're quite happy for seismic surveying to subsidise the oil drilling industry to drill more wells, a government that is quite happy to prop up the likes of Tiwai and only get them to stay in New Zealand a couple of years, a government that this week embarrassingly had the first Environmental Protection Authority case declined. Now remember it was national, it was Simon Bridges who went on television and said I support the uh, TTR's proposal, I support more iron sands mining on New Zealand shore. It was Simon Bridges who said that. He said he wanted to see this project go ahead and it was Stephen Joyce who was quite happy to front up again with taxpayers' dollars, playing fast and loose with taxpayers' dollars. It was Stephen Joyce who offered up to $25 million to this foreign offshore oil company with Dame Jenny Shipley on the board, offered them $25 million. But you know what? The project was so bad, the company hadn't done their homework, the risks were so great, even National's Environmental Protection Authority had to decline it. The first one ever, Mr Speaker. Uh, and what you see is... On one hand, the environment being the winner, the marine environment, the humpback whales, the Maui's dolphins which live nearby are the winner. It's National who's the loser, because it's National that supports it. It's National said that said this company had done their homework, yet the Environmental Protection Authority said the company hadn't done their homework. And it was National that was quite happy to throw taxpayers' dollars at them, yet the Environmental Protection Authority said it wasn't going to happen. So let's focus on a smart, green, innovative economy. Let's build a clean energy economy for New Zealand. This is a $22 billion annual economic opportunity. Investment New Zealand says there's a $150 billion export uh, opportunity in clean tech and green energy by 2030. That's what we want to embrace. That's why we're going to the election saying we will get to 100% renewables. That's why we're saying we're going to help Kiwis with more insulation under their roof and solar panels on the top through a low interest loans. We're going to give Kiwis a fair deal, a fair and reasonable price when they export surplus electricity to the grid. It's the Greens who are going to help those Kiwi startups and investments uh, through the Green Investment Bank. It's the Greens who are going to send a proper economic signal through the tax system, through the carbon tax cut, to save Kiwi businesses and families money, to see a clean energy economy. And Mr Speaker, this is why I'm very happy to be standing here opposing this bill, because there's a better way, a pathway to a richer New Zealand, which the Green Party is championing. Uh, this is what I think New Zealanders want to see. And when we go ask the public, do you want to keep subsidising the polluters, the oil drillers, the seabed miners? No. They want a fair go, a proper economic system which has a, a leadership vision and looks to the future. A smart, green, innovative economy is a richer economy, leading a richer New Zealand, and that's what we're going to continue to champion. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Simon O'Connor.
Uh, Mr Speaker, thank you for the chance to take this call, and particularly after the Greens, there's a few things that need to be put on uh, record um, to get straight. The first is that actually around FATCA, the, the IGA, the Intergovernmental Agreement, has uh, been signed. So when the opposition, the Greens included, are saying that it hasn't been, that's just patently uh, untrue. The IGA for FATCA has been signed. We're hearing... Um, we're hearing just a bit earlier, too, about this iron sands decision by the EPA and uh, how this is a defeat for the government. This is a win for the government in so far as we are the ones, in fact, it's my ministerial uh, colleague sitting here in front, who has put in the system unique uh, in here in New Zealand, and for the first time, that these very decisions have to go through the EPA. So we're thrilled that this decision's going through, that there's actually been, or been, a, a, a process